minus one minute. T minus fifty seconds. T minus forty seconds. T minus thirty seconds. The only thing I asked because she said she went live and then T minus twenty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Own it, own it, own it, Kong. I own it. It did. Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. Y'all live. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> really? Look at this. So we really can't see what's going on. However, I do have my Twitch sitting up here. Uh, and is... I can see that it looks so good. We look it looks really cute. But welcome to Women's Wrestling Talk, the number one women's wrestling show on the planet. We are, of course, the Salt Shakers, if you don't know by now. My name is Triana Santana. I am the ERC of Women's Wrestling Talk. And of course, I'm here with my tag partner, Mickey Bougie, the singing writer host. Why are you looking like that? Yeah, this is yeah, this is crazy. Uh, we're here for the Impact <laughs> Club show tonight. Um, we are a little late. Um, if you know anything about Nashville, you know Nashville will have traffic at any time of the night. Um, so, yeah, we're here tonight. <laughs> um, I don't know what you guys are seeing, but I hope you like it. Uh, what I'm seeing, <laughs> I, I don't even know. So, you know, we watched Impact tonight, and... I don't know. It was very good. It was good for me to watch it because I was actually there at the show. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was really cool. What did you, what did you think? Um, well, in the midst of doing the news and an interview, I did get a chance to see on my monitor over here a little bit of impact. It was a fairly good show. There was a lot of things that transpired um on tonight's show that I'm really, really ready to like kind of dive into and talk about, you know? Are you ready to talk about it, Nikki? Um, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like, trying to say what's going on, because I don't know if they can, if you guys can hear me, let me know. No, Please. they said they can hear us. You can hear us? I'm not seeing mm -hmm. any comments. I don't see anything that you guys are saying. Um, so, I can see. There's like, so I'm going to see in here. here. He said he's this, is how, this is how I'm viewing you guys right now, literally. <laughs> like, this is this is what I'm seeing. Well, see, I'm looking uh, at them on my monitor, so I can I'm turning up to the side so I can see them say what they say. Um, Bobby said he does appreciate him, appreciates us for supporting him. Um, and oh yeah, I'll... he was like, and that's too sweet, you know. Um, We're in impact now, so we can do that. Obviously, you can't see it. <laughs> 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 what is it? They bring us over here to this promotion, and it's really like... I mean, it's new for us, you know? We're, it's very we new have for to, us. Listen, I know we're superstars over, you know, everywhere else, but, you know, we're we're, we're sure. locals here now, you know? We gotta we gotta work our way up to the top, you know what I'm saying? I literally I have to... Do. Let me grab my charger. I, I literally got have to, at this point, um, <laughs> yeah... 
the match card was was pretty stellar. Um, let's just start with um, the match with uh, Ziggy Dice. Hmm. Been crazy scene on BTI. Yeah, before the impact with the with the beautiful and lovely uh, Gia Miller, and of course, mm-hmm. um, we saw Josh Josh Matthews as well. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it was Ziggy Dice with Johnny Swinger versus Crazy Steve. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, what can you say? I love seeing. You know, I'm not seeing anything tonight, but I love <laughs> seeing Ziggy Dice. Uh, I love seeing that man because he is something else. Mm-hmm. He is. I'm just, I'm just looking at it. This Isn't is cool. it cute though? Like, I mean, really? So I can't wait to go back and watch this because like, it looks really cute. This is crazy. It's really cute. Like, I would never expect it like to look like this from from this point of view right here. Mm-hmm. It looks very blank, but on this side, it yeah. looks immaculate. I wish y'all could see what we were seeing. I really wish uh, you could. <laughs> we're backstage in the locker room and catering right. We're backstage and catering right now. Uh, but the match, the match with Ziggy and Crazy Steve, it was actually a really, really good match. I mean, the more I see Ziggy, um, the yeah. more I, I actually start to like his character, and I, I'm getting familiar with Johnny Swinger, oh, that's um, yeah. the, the Swingers and the Swingettes. Um, and of course, Crazy Steve and, and Black Tarus. I mean, what can you expect out of out of Crazy Steve, right? Black he's crazy. Black he he's gonna do what he has to do. He's and I mean, he is. They they both they both are. And it was a nice way to have them on before the impact, right before they we could pretty much dive into the show. Um, in regards to the first match um, of the night that happened to be what you like to call him, Lorado, uh, when it's Lorado. <laughs> Laredo and... Can't see it, but I was going to say it's the same right this time. Uh, in a qualifying match, actually, which when I was at the show, oh, fun fact, man, they never told us that this was mm. the actual... Oh, um, we didn't even know that this was a qualif- qualifying match for the Ultimate X match that's going on at Slammiversary June 19th here, my neck of the woods. Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville Fairgrounds, Ultimate X Championship on the line. And I have so many spoilers that I have to keep to myself for next week. Um, <laughs> this, but we do know that Ace Austin will be in this match. Mm-hmm. And um, Lorado Kid faced off with Speedball, Mike Bailey. Um, and I mean, you know, Laredo Kid, he's, you know, we're, we're pretty much kind of, if you're familiar with, like, Lutras and all that stuff, it's a really, really good match. But Mike, Mike Bailey Speedball, I'm definitely becoming a fan. This man hits really, really hard. Like I said, like, when we discussed once before, he does remind me of a Rock Lee from Naruto. Definitely very much animated with his move sets and everything, his striking ability. And this was a way to pretty much, I would say, open up impact, you know? You got... Two two interesting um, styles of wrestling coming together and opening up impact. And, of course, I mean, Laredo Kid, he fought as hard as he could, but unfortunately, yeah. it, it wasn't, it, it didn't do much for him because Speedball ended up winning. Yeah. You know, he's added I mean, to the match. And, you know... Where is Chris Bay? Yeah, what is Chris Bay? Where's Trey Miguel? Where are they? We don't know where they are. We didn't see I mean, them. Uh, actually, Chris Bay was there. Um, well, but he was there in a match. But you know, him and Jay White, they weren't there along with uh, El Phantasma. So when you starting to be a little interesting in and looking at a little bit, um, that nice. Like I said, he was at the show, and he's really he's a really nice looking kid. Um, he's no tra- <laughs> I mean, but uh, I mean, you know, uh, easy on the eyes. And, uh, you know, I think that he, from what I've seen, is a pretty immaculate wrestler. Mm-hmm. And, right. and I don't want to good because from what I see, he's pretty nice, you know? Mm-hmm. But what did you think? I mean, did you think that the winner of this match was... Um, the right pick for the Ultimate X match, joining 
Kenny King, and of course, Ace Austin. I do, because, I mean, Mike Bailey and Ace Austin are very familiar in the ring. I mean, they they wrestle for the title anyway. So, I mean, it's only right, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. It would have been nice to see Laredo Kid be a part of it. But yeah. I think Mike, but they, I think they have a, a heavy push um, and a heavy interest in Mike Bailey over Absolutely. Laredo Kid. Absolutely. And I think I think both of them are really kind of really good contenders for the X Division Championship. As we see Ace Austin, of course, in New Japan and yeah. over in Japan at this moment. Um, you know, doing that and everything makes sense now, you know, seeing him take the championship. I don't think I don't care who he faces. I don't care if Trey Miguel is involved or not. I just do not see Ace Austin leaving Slammiversary with this championship. Of course, the week of the Salt Shakers will be here, and we will be giving you our predictions, of course. I'm giving you a little early. That might change next week. It might. Um, because we do have a qualifying match. Trey Miguel, Alex Shelley, um, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, they will go. <laughs> they will go case um Damn. and one will be in that ultimate X match and all i know is um yeah um i don't i don't care how many times he takes that l this is gonna be if trey's in that ultimate x match this is finally gonna be the moment where he beats ace austin I'm but i mean yes and no you know because he's yeah. already won the title he's already won that title mm-hmm. we saw it Live. Yeah. You know? He did, but yes and no, because we still don't know necessarily who the other um, opponents are for Ace Austin. Well, I'm talking about we as in the people who don't go to these shows. Okay. We're not, you you well, are well, excluded. Well, the spoilers are all out. I didn't even see these matches, but the spoilers are all out for next week. Yeah, but as of right now, in the present time, we do not know no spoilers. None. No. You may no. know. But those who don't care for spoilers do not no. know. So, yes and no. You got to think about all the other competitors there. You got to think about someone like a, a Kenny King, who, who's actually in this Ultimate X match. Who Trey McGill will actually be facing in a couple weeks. Mm-hmm. Before the anniversary at the um, Revolver, and he'll be putting his Revolver Remix Championship on the line against Kenny King and I want to see mm-hmm. how they are. match up. Well, I think Kenny King is, is a, a phenomenal wrestler. I mean, of course, you know, seeing the match with him and Chris Bay, uh, though I wish Chris Bay would have won, but of course, Maria instead of herself, well, crazy, but we won't get into that. Um, well, the little disco ball did get involved, so she <laughs> stayed on the she just. <laughs> Just I, I do. I do find. <laughs> I do find it funny um, to see her on commentary more and more. I mean, moving on to our next match with, um, you know, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett versus the Good Brothers, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, their, their names always get me. You um, really butcher their names. You be like Mike Taven and Matt. It's terrible. <laughs> I do like I do like Matt Taven though. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a good guy, um, and I think they are good wrestlers too. All of them really are. I mean, of course, yeah. I think overall this match though, um, it was good. I mean, I didn't have it. I didn't have a bad expectation for it. I just thought it was a little, you know, not random, but. Well, I think Maria may have learned her lesson when she gets involved in matches. You might just get speared by your own husband. Oh, because that child. Listen. I mean, she sounded pretty nicely, though. But you have to learn not to get involved. You cost your husband. You cost your team, you know, the loss tonight because you just chose to get involved. She should have just stayed on commentary per usual. But no, you decided you want to get involved, so now look at you. Uh, 
They ain't lay down on the ground. Shoe off the shoe then flew off somewhere else. Yeah, cause I mean it was coming eventually. I mean she's no more Chelsea, you know. No. But she, she didn't take no, no chair shots get thrown through tables. Like, you know no. what I'm saying? No. Reaching that marquee, in my opinion, like Chelsea Gray. But I just feel like this match, you know, it was cute. It was. It was. <sighs> what it you... was. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I'm always gonna. I mean, Bullet Club won, so that's all I care about with the Good Brothers. Got to see a little bit yeah. of Jay White and a little bit of Chris Bay um, uh-huh. here tonight, um, just for a little bit. They didn't really you know, get a chance to come all the way down to the ring. They just kind of, you know, let the good brothers go out there and do their thing. Um, and they end up winning. So, I mean, obviously, it seems as if, like, this feud that, that's, that's happened with Honor No More and the Bullet Club could probably not be coming to an end. That's kind of how I look at it. I feel like there's there's still more to, to what could be happening with this with this with um, with these teams and with this faction. I do not. Um, and you know normally we don't get through the men this quickly you know this is the last thing honestly Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say this before Mm -hmm. we get into the team match between the Briscoes and Violent by Designs uh, Joe Joe Doring and Mm -hmm. Diener yeah I always um, (laughs) accompanied by Eric Young who is the number one contender for the Impact World Championship Mm-hmm. Against Josh Alexander at Slammiversary. I don't know who did that video package of Eric Young. Superb. Everything that I've been saying since he won the gauntlet about the history of TNA, about the history of Impact, about the history of wrestling. Mm-hmm. That was really, 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 really good. Like, I yeah. hope they continue to show that package. Not overdo it, mm-hmm. but I commend whoever put that together because from his promo to mm-hmm. all the history that he has in, in Nashville and TNA and mm-hmm. Impact and that thing, I know that we were very upset that it was Eric Young to win the gauntlet, of, you know, gauntlet for gold. But it, it's beginning to make sense. And the one thing that I about the fact that Slammiversary is it's not too far away, but we are technically a month. Um, a month. Yeah, we are. Um, we're a month away from, from Slammiversary, literally. This story is about to get crazy. Like, the Briscoes are going to even out the odds for Josh, mm-hmm. but for not, I don't think it's going to be for that long. I think they're going to have to take care of, of course, we all know Briscoes mm-hmm. will be fake good brothers at Slammiversary. Tonight, they had to face off, of course, mm-hmm. you know, with um <laughs> with uh, Violet by Design. Mm-hmm. And so it just really, I don't know. I feel like Everything that transpired after that match and everything, of course, mm-hmm. um, being there, I was just like, man, like this is probably going to be a one-off because mm-hmm. probably going to have a match because that was announced too. Of course, we'll get it within the next two weeks or so, maybe next week. Yeah. Um, this, the Citrus um, Bowl, I think is what it's called. I'm not sure on the name. Yeah, that's in did- Florida. Yeah, that's in Florida that they did the tapings over the weekend. Um, mm-hmm. We did Briscoe's and Josh Alexander actually team up mm-hmm. um, together against Violet by Design. And so I think that this match overall mm-hmm. is just starting to, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really becoming more and more excited about it as, as we, you know, the week keep moving to some anniversary. I just think that there's a lot of the story that's really developing between these these guys. Um, 
I feel like, you know, even though the Briscoes and, you know, Lala Valentine did have their tag match tonight, and they're going to be teaming with Josh either the next week or the week after next, um, it, eventually it could all lead down to Slammiversary where maybe the Briscoes are not only facing the Good Brothers. It could turn into a triple threat match. You know, with with the girl yeah. against the Bristos and um, Violet by Design, it's possible that it could take place that way. Where you know, because I mean, they're 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 obviously treated with them because you came in, you took their titles. You know, what I'm saying so. Of course, they want those titles back. Um, so I think that'll be a way to incorporate them in that feud and make it like a, a triple threat match for those tag team titles. Um, do I think the Briscoes are going to lose? I don't know, because I don't necessarily know how long the Briscoes are going to be staying in impact. That raises a lot of questions, a lot of eyebrows. I mean, the Good Brothers, I think, I think, I don't know if the Good Brothers will be leaving soon or whatnot. I'm unsure about that, too. Violent by Design seem to be like the only ones that still going to necessarily be in impact. I, I want to know what you think. Mm-hmm. If, hey, Jay White, because, you know, let's just say Jay White decides, you know, he kind of fades out of impact. And then the Good Brothers, like you said, kind of fade off in impact. Where does that leave Chris Bay? Do they put a title on him? Or, like, what happens? Does he also fade and go into somewhere else where we see him more on Indies? Or the places, or he stays in impact like he's always been very adamant about, mm-hmm. and they put a they put a, a title on him again. I think I think with Chris Bay, it's possible that he'll stay in impact. You know, what I'm saying he was impact. It was impact before he became Bullet Club. You know, what I'm saying. So I feel like Bullet Club kind of just allowed him to be the first black person to be in there as well as kind of help elevate a little bit of his career and his name a lot more so that people would really like be familiarized with who Chris Bay is and a lot of people do um, like when him and Jay White are together as a tag, you know, the Jay and Bay connection and all of this stuff. I feel like this will be a chance to really allow Chris Bay to shine in front of an audience where during the time he <coughs> won the individual title or he won uh, this and that, that he was not able to really celebrate that type of moment with the crowd. So I think that with Chris Bay, he's an amazing wrestler. He may be not that great on the mic, but his in-ring ability makes up for it. He has a swagger about him and a presence that people love, people enjoy looking at. He he just ha- he just he has that package. If once he gets, I feel like once he kind of gets a little bit better on the mic, he could be that a top star in Impact. Even if it's just like being in the tag or going out the X Division title, I think maybe if if Chris Bay is built in a way where he is can be like dominant, be like that, either a super heel or a super baby face or just even a tweener, just be who Chris Bay is, your girl's favorite wrestler. Um, I feel like maybe he could become world champion one day. It's possible. Yeah. Honestly, to be honest, I when I first saw Chris Bay wrestle, I really just wanted him and Trey to just feud all the time. Like I just yeah. wanted them to have all the time. And would you want to see them in a tag together? I no. think. I, I, well, if they tag for one time, you know, that they, would be nice. for I good mean, old sakes, for good yeah. old best friend's sake, you know, they love each other. I don't even know what to call them. Yeah, they are. They're really good. It is good to see them, like, travel together. I don't know, though. I think I would rather see them face each other because I feel like mm-hmm. their views go, like, go crazy. It but really. I do, it, it is going to be very interesting to see how since the good brothers already have their match mm-hmm. white and, and chris bay it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of like it's, where they fall in it 
Yeah, maybe they, to uh, find a way to be supportive or something of that nature, you know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, it's like who really knows? I mean, maybe Chris Brown be doing something on the Indies or something like that. Or um, maybe Jay White, you know, of course, the Forbidden Door is coming up soon, so he could be doing something over there. You know, you kind of yeah. just don't really know exactly where they will be landing at, you know, when it when it comes to um, Slammiversary. I mean, they could find a way to try to help out the Good Brothers win the titles. You know? I mean, of course, the Briscoes are still not too fond of uh, the Good Brothers anyway due to the fact of them losing at the multiverse. So, you know... There, there are different things that could probably open up the door for for that type of feud or something like that. But, I mean, the Briscoes would need a little more people power um, if they want to go up against the Bullet Club. But honestly, I feel like they could probably take all of themselves, if possible, the Briscoes would. Versus the entire Bullet Club. Bullet Club, by themselves. Well, for sure, we know that Josh Alexander will be facing off with mm-hmm. Eric Young. Um, at the um, at Slam anniversary, and then we also have the Good Brothers up against the Briscoes for those Impact Knockout for those Impact World <laughs> Championships. That was gonna be the next thing we talked about. That's why. That's uh, hilarious. Oh, don't forget in regards to next week, we do have Chris Saban versus I think his name is Frankie Kazarian. Kazarian. Oh yeah. Know. But yeah, that match is happening next week too. I just wanted to put that out there before we move over into the women. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that that match too, because Chris Saban mm-hmm. cut his whole promo. Yeah, uh, you know, very upset about not winning the you know got for the gold mm-hmm. and everything. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm just looking at the stream. <laughs> Listen, it is. You're losing focus. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can see what's transpiring. <laughs> um, but when he called him out, I was kind of like, that makes sense because that's gonna be like a fan match. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's just a little fan match to have everybody look happy about it and stuff like that. So hey, that's hey, that. Hey, hey, hey. Might kick off the show. It might. It's that possible. Unless, unless now everybody can't be, you know. Everybody can't be Trevor Gale, in my opinion. But the Ultimate X match might start first. And that would... I feel like that would blow the roof off of the beginning. But then the way you book, you have to be important. Um, But moving right along... um, I don't know how to feel about the whole locker room segment. Mm-hmm. Locker room him in Madison. I thought it was cool. You know, Ziggy Dice and Johnny Slinger had popped in and everything. Mm-hmm. But then you get Decay, of course, Rosemary and Havoc mm-hmm. coming. And now we are basically circle in the block. Now, before that, Madison made it very clear that she was very happy that the inspiration was gone out of the locker room, unintended, um, with that. Listen, if you ever see me, um, if you ever see me on the show, like, at the shows in Impact, I'm screaming for Madison. Not the biggest Tanel Dashwood fan, but love Madison. Um, and so I like them as champions. I just don't know because I saw, and I don't know if you guys saw it, but Lady Frost um, is booked for a show after Slammiversary. She is. So I wonder that are Havoc and Madison, you know, are, are Havoc and Rosemary going to be facing Madison and Tennille? Mm-hmm. And we finally get Giselle and Lady Frost back as a, as a team. Because I don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I really love Giselle and Lady Frost. I bring them up yeah. all the like, I bring them up all the time in being a stellar bag. But mm-hmm. I was married, kind of like <coughs> we want, we want what belongs to us. I wish I could like talk like that, but 
Do you? Kind of, because Rosemary, let me tell you something. Rosemary is the most theatrical person. Like, I've never seen, and I mean, it's not like I've been around these wrestlers consistently. I've only been to one mm-hmm. WWE show, and that was recently. But, like, as far as, like, all the impact, you know, people at Impact and then some of the other shows I've been to, like, Rosemary is the one person that's always in character. Mm-hmm. Like, in even Havoc breaks character sometimes, but Rosemary is yeah. creepy. Rosemary is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. But it's like so scary at the same time because it's just like, dang, maybe this is like, and it's not a bad thing, but maybe this is just mm-hmm. Rosemary like all the time. Sometimes I feel like I've never really heard Rosemary speak before. <sighs> it's wild. I really feel like I, I really feel like I can't even. I can't even say I know what she sounds like. Mm. Besides, well, like, well, as far as like being in character wise, I mean, of course, you know, I've seen, I saw the, you know, the um, Impact Press Pass she did with Gil and, and all of them, you know, hear her regular voice. But as far as like her being in character voice, bitch, honestly, to be honest, how she was on that press call is how she is. Like, that, I guess that, I need to pay attention more wrong, to when she speaks. Like, Oh, she's like, oh, and it's not like, I can't do it without a UK accent, but it's just very longing and very theatrical. Mm-hmm. Weird. It's very weird, but it's Like, cool. magnificent or something. Like, she's always in character to me. Like. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Very interesting. I don't know, but I mean, if they spin in the block again, they might, I mean, might as well, but I mean, when we first got the encounter of seeing Giselle Shaw and Lady Frosby a tag team at the multiverse, they worked pretty well together. They both were just, you know, gunning for that, you know, the little spotlight and everything, but they worked, honestly, them being in the ring with each other, they're a little bit familiarized with, how, with each other. I, would, I wouldn't I would mind seeing them being like a, a tag or anything like that, or um, cause child, Alicia, whatever her name is, um, she didn't make no, a cut. Yeah, hmm. she did I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. It, 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 it wasn't in sync. It just, it just, it made you want to say bye, 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 because I, I wasn't feel feeling like, it. I feel like Giselle should have fought them on her own. Like on a two on one? Like two on one for the titles. And then if she would have won, which, I mean, obviously she didn't, but if she would have won, she would have had both of them. Mm-hmm. And then she could have held them until, like, she could have defended them. And this is just me fantasy booking. But then she could have defended them at Slamversary. And then, boom, Lady Frost comes out to, you know, be her partner. And so they would defend them against, so like, uh... <laughs> I wanted Giselle to do Alicia like that for messing up her arm. Push her? Wow. Yeah. I thought she was pushing I... me. No. I was <laughs> like, I was no, pushing I me. I feel like you I feel like you're pushing me. Like I don't like I don't no. like that. <laughs> I don't like that. It's it's it, I felt threatened. Like, why are you what are you doing? Like, okay, stop. Side by side, I go like this. Oh my god. See from my thing, I feel like it, <laughs> I feel like you're pushing me. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I went like this, you know what I'm saying? See? Pulling me forward. You're pulling me forward. Okay. You, I, I really be pushing you guys at home. Child, I'm scared. <laughs> she should just not on out the way and say, you know what, you messed up my opportunity. Boom. And then they, they would have got to fight. And then Giselle would have won. And then. You know, I don't know. I see a lot of good long-term booking for Giselle Shaw. Even though she wasn't on tonight, I do feel like Giselle is moving up the ranks. Like, if they had, like, a, um, if they had, like, a, um, I don't like to call it a mid-grade. I think that's so disrespectful. If they had a mid-card, I don't even like that either. But if they had a, a secondary women's championship, Giselle would be that champion. Like, if it was defended, um, like, if they brought more sh- like, if they chopped up a lot of the stuff that they do on beat before the impact and actually have matches, like, yeah. one more, 
Um, or if that championship was always defended on like Countdown to Rebellion or Countdown to Slammiversary, she mm-hmm. would definitely. Well, that's why I thought that's what the d- digital media title would be like on like the Countdown for a certain. But and obviously, I mean, media champion. I was the person who's in my knees and stuff doing on their honeymoon and everything, holding their <laughs> sister. Because he always shows us love, and if he if he doesn't do anything, he's gonna retweet us. And so, mm-hmm. Matt, Chelsea, if you're uh, listening, we appreciate you. Because <laughs> um, y'all were some legends tonight. Y'all were some legends tonight for checking in like that. Y'all have really become the it couple of wrestling. From GCW to Impact to NWA. I mean, golly. Like, mm-hmm. if you hate the Cordonas, they're doing their job. I don't see how you can hate them. I don't either. I just hope they come from GCW. I just think they they they're a great couple. They they do what is needs to be done. And I mean, like, well, how how can you hate what Matt and Chelsea are doing as a couple and and separately? I mean, for them to call in on their honeymoon and Maddie's to address Rich Swan, who they he figured figured was an idiot for thinking <laughs> that he was gonna be coming out there doing that gauntlet match. <laughs> It's so good. No, no, so really, no, I was mad because you thought that I, you thought he was coming out too. Yeah, yeah. coming out. Too. And then when I um, saw it was Aiden English, sorry, it was Drama King. No, that's that's not disrespecting me like that. That name is that man's name is Matthew Ray Wong. He is the Drama King. I'm sorry, king. I do apologize. Two- go ahead. I mean, king. social media called that man Aiden English. Well, we're not gonna do that. Those are for you WWE marks that only sit there and watch WWE. And you're not one of those. Oh, okay. So we're not gonna call that man that. Well, I said uh, drama king. That's secondary. That's drunk. No, that's first dairy. That's not even what. Yes. <laughs> oh, what do you mean? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's first dairy. Over, over that other word, absolutely. Well, drama said in came in uh, the ring and decided that he would eliminate. Rich Swan that time, so it's just like it was, it was a lot going on. But I mean, shout out to to Matt and Chelsea. Chelsea does have a match coming up with guest Jordan Grace, a woman who was, who was in the Queen of the Mountain Multiple. match. Yeah. Now let me finish my statement. So what did I say? This is what happened when you interrupt me. Yeah, one of the you said who is in there. Yeah, on another woman. Yeah, Chelsea, we know Chelsea is in there, but I'm saying, like, who's one of them who is in, you know, the match. We know Chelsea is in there. You gotta pay attention, Nikki. I'm paying attention. You didn't say it right. You're not paying attention. But Jordan was the one that was in the match. I'm just trying to make sure Chelsea gets the same graces. Because they're what do you both Because no, the way you worded it, it seemed like jo- it seemed like you were saying one of like Jordan Grace was w- the only one in that match that's in that Queen of the Mountain match. No, what I'm saying is one of them. I, and I, then I, heard I think you because you're you're looking down and not necessarily looking at me. All your focus is somewhere else, and your ears have tuned in to no, I wasn't that looking was at not anything. That's that why I said two. That's why I said one of them. I already know Chelsea's in there. People know that Chelsea's in there. Yeah, yeah that's and what I so said. Both of them. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying like one of them, as in right now, I'm talking about Jordan Grace being her opponent as of right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're both in the match. They are. You gotta, you gotta follow me sometimes, okay? Thank you for your time. Um, but. Yeah, so I mean, they have that match next week. Um, Jordan gets her hands on Chelsea's, you know? The spot. I don't know. I think Matt's going to find his way in that match. Child, Jordan's going to uh, German suplex that man out of his uh, socks. So, what, what, what else? I don't know. I'm actually ready to see how Chelsea goes one on one with uh, Jordan. I wish it was Deanna. Because I believe, I think that 
there's so all of them have a match. All of the women are in some type of match. So I know that me and Savannah, I think Tasha and I want to say Tasha and Mia have a match. And then Deanna has a match with somebody, but I, I know Savannah, I think Savannah and Taya, there's a, there's a lot of matches coming for the women who are involved, plus Savannah, plus Taya, and they're like chopping it into singles. I saw another match too that was announced. I don't know why they just won't put Taya and Savannah in the match too. Well, Savannah doesn't qualify for the match because she's not a knockout, a former knockouts champion. That's why Gail told her better luck next time or whatever she said. In okay. order to be, you have to be. Go ahead and put a match with Tasha Steels. Savannah beats Tasha. Boom. Schedule another match. Boom. Tasha. I, I would not want to see Savannah <laughs> go over Tasha. I think that them referring to Savannah as, and I'm, I'm trying to think what did he say. I want, I want, I'm almost certain he said like, like security blanket or something he said the way tom had referred to her i thought it was in a way of showing that savannah even though we know that tasha can win the title without savannah mm -hmm. savannah is still present of of her if she turns i think the timing it's all about timing but mm -hmm. i don't like tire vaccary isn't involved in this match. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I was like, yeah, I think it would have been nice to have Taya to be a part of it. I think it would have been nice if if they had, like, mm -hmm. if they made this, like, a big thing where it's like, um, we were talking about former champions, Nikki James, Angelina Love. Yeah. There's so I mean, many names has it always and I know I went back and watched some of the um, King of the Mountain matches and I can't remember how many people were in it but I could have sworn there were like a buku's amount of men mm -hmm. that were involved and I don't know if they're just trying to be more safe mm -hmm. and have it more like they have more area to do the yeah. match or whatever but me and Yim coming back and, mm -hmm. and getting the opportunity and then Taya, she's a champion, but she's not a champion in Impact. I don't know. I just think that the no. way it's just a little, like, I don't think, and I and I, and I I love Tasha to death, but I don't think she's walking out of, at the Queen of the Mountain. The only person, and I will say this over and over and over again, the only Queen of the Mountain in this match is Deanna Peraza. That's it. There's no other person that you could really give this to. I mean, you can you can give to anyone you want to, but logically, there's just no way that Deanna can't can't come out the winner. I mean, what we saw tonight with them facing each other. Of course, we saw Deanna Peraza, uh, Tasha Steele, Savannah Evans versus Taya Vachary, Mia Yim, and Jordan Grace. Mm -hmm. Jordan Grace and Taya Vachary and Mia Yim and all of them, you know, get the victory, which is great. But what does that do? Like, Mia Yim and Jordan Grace do have a team victory, along with Taya Vachary, mm -hmm. over a former champion, and the current knockouts champion, which is great, but I'm really interested to see how the singles competitors are gonna match up. You know? I mean, I think so. I personally think that it'll be nice. Um, I would have loved for it to have if they were doing like you know since they're doing the singles, I would love for it to be like Mia and, and Diona. To be honest, I mean, since Mia did come out. Um, during like after the match with Ty Bakri and Deanna, I think yeah. that um, Mia and and Deanna, I think they would have a pretty decent match. To be honest, I don't think I've, I don't think I've never seen them in a match together before. Um, 
Um, but I think it'll be pretty decent. Um, uh, me personally, in this in this Queen of Mountain, I am going with me and you. Yeah, I am. I mean, for her to to come back, yes, it'll be logical for Deanna Perazzo to win, but what was the point of, of having her her you know you know her I mean I guess this could be more so like a redemption for her from lo- losing all of her titles you know what I'm saying um this would be a way to kind of get her to be continue to be that face of the knockout division you know what I'm saying with or without a title yes she she is but you have some other girls in there who are not going to let that happen or going to try their best to not let that happen. You know, with the powerhouse of Jordan Grace, you're in there with your best friend, Chelsea Green. You know what I'm saying? We know that they've been in matches with each other before. You know what I'm saying? So we already know that they're not going to cut any slap on each other. Uh, We know that Jordan Grace and Deanna Peraza have been in plenty of matches together. Jordan Grace is not going to play with those girls. She's not. You know, we have the return of Mia Yim, who a lot of people have forgotten that Mia Yim was a beast during her time in Impact. She was having amazing matches with Rosemary and Gail Kim and, and so on and so forth. She was she beat so. Championship. She beat Forget Gail Kim for the for the Impact Knockouts Champion. I see Gail Kim like costing Mia Yim. The championship. I'm curious to see what goes on. Well, can't spoil that. I was about to say that, but there'll be some things that go on with some people who aren't involved in the Queen of the Mountain match, and we'll mm-hmm. talk about that. We'll talk about that as that transpires. Yeah. Um, there wasn't that like, leaked online or whatever. It really doesn't give much, but mm-hmm. I'm curious to see um, Deanna and Chelsea how long they're going to work together mm-hmm. because if you remember it was Chelsea who almost won the Ultimate X match but it was Tasha Steele's mm-hmm. what if it's Chelsea who win, who almost wins the um, you know, know almost know. wins the, and then it's mm-hmm. someone else I just personally if Tasha Steele's is Queen of the Mountain. This will solidify this will solidify her for years to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, if she can get a victory after winning the Ultimate X match, losing to Mickey J, beating Mickey J, successfully defending against Havoc and Rosemary, mm-hmm. now have had beat Chelsea. Deanna, Jordan, and me and him would be crazy because no matter who wins, mm-hmm. wait, oh yeah, Chelsea has been. I was like, the hell? Yeah. I forgot Chelsea. <laughs> she has. Don't go to a different have, name. You have just literally mm-hmm. beat four other knockouts champion who, in my opinion, mm-hmm. you do have the top of the top. You do. In this match, um, who do you, if if you had to choose, who do you think would take the pin? We'll see. Okay, so I don't know how they're doing the rules, but from what yeah. I gain, you know, the match works mm-hmm. is when you are pinned, you are put in a cage, mm-hmm. put in like a box, and then it's a two minute timer, I believe. And then it's very complicated. And then <laughs> so I did dig into it. You have to pin someone before you can actually. I don't know. It's really all over the place. I'm not mm-hmm. here on the technical technicality. Mm-hmm. But if I had to pick someone, who would who would lose? I would want Deanna to pin Jordan Grace. Mm-hmm. Or or um oh like because now that I think about like okay I wouldn't be mad I 
wouldn't be mad if anyone won. Won. Yeah. But I would be. Okay, so it's really it's really tricky because even if you don't beat Tasha, you still beat Tasha. True. Mm-hmm. And to me, I just feel like after Tasha, mm-hmm. like y'all gonna end it with Tasha. I don't want to see it near Yam. I don't want to see it Jordan. I'm not saying I don't want to see it Chelsea, but I don't want to see it Chelsea over Deanna. But this is like, just at this point, let Tasha retain. Yeah. But Joseph, I, I, I was going to read what Joseph had said in the chat. Go ahead. So, Joseph had said that in regards to when we're trying to figure out like how the Queen of the Mount would actually go for the women, um, he said that he would imagine it's the same rules as a man. You are only eligible to win the match once you pin or submit somebody and send them to the cage for a certain amount of time. It's basically a reverse ladder match. You hang the right. knockout championship on that ledge first you win. Correct. So you have to, have to hang the championship up. Because mm-hmm. that's what I remember when I watched it. I was watching it with someone... And we were laughing mm-hmm. at the fact that you had championship on, mm-hmm. but then you had to take it right. Yeah. And so it's very like, you know, I'm not gonna lie, it's a very Nashville thing. Mm-hmm. Like to me, this is a very Nashville. Match. Like it's I'm very. very excited to see what's gonna take place when the, with these. I mean, because you, I mean, it is. I feel like it's gonna be very interesting to see these uh five women um in this match one wearing the title i'm gonna it's nice it's gonna be interesting to see how how they try to get that title out you know tasha with her little self uh um, i know tasha and chelsea definitely struggle towards the end and i thought chelsea was gonna win the ultimate ex and be the one i mean it looked as if like but it's kind of like as if like when you go back and look at the ultimate ex which was a which was look really really good for the first time for it to be women it's just like it just dropped in tasha still's hand and she just fell and it was just like maybe it really was meant for her her. it's like that machine it's like that machine that you play at like arcades or you're trying to, it's inside a little thing and you use a little hook to navigate, trying to pick, you know, grab it or whatever. And then you pick it up and then it just falls back down. That's exactly what it felt like with that ultimate X-Match towards the end with Chelsea and, and Tasha. Um, but I don't know. I'm, Chelsea has to be, if Tasha wins, Chelsea has to be her next opponent. I mean, yeah. And then against all odds, Tasha Steels and Lana, well, Tasha Steels against all odds, because I mean, she the one who let it slip on live, not me. But, yeah. you know, that's just what I heard mm-hmm. on him. But I, I ain't even through Instagram. <laughs> I just personally, like, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. And I'm really nervous. Like, I'm not, I'm just, like, I'm tired of watching the other movie. I'm sick of it. Like, I'm just going to go ahead and say it on them. I am sick of it. It is the most, like, bound for glory. You took a glory hand. Was, was like, that was... It was awful. Awful. Totally, like, I mean, you can say it was expected, but yeah, I wasn't you can also it. say it was BS, too. I was not expecting Nikki James to go over Deanna Pearl at all. Now, looking back at everything, how everything happened, that was great. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you know, she beats Roxy. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, done, yeah, done. That was it. Like, <sighs> nothing else. That was one of Deanna's, like, besides the match that she put on with Lady Frost and Giselle Sharp, because that was mm-hmm. that, that match. That was a good match. Um, but, then I watched her get the ROH championship, and then of course, you know, she already had the Triple A, you know, Reign of the Reign. We go into the Champ Challenge, Champ Challenge, Champ Challenge. Taya, <laughs> <laughs> at WrestleCon, Taya, you started all of this. 
You started you know all that. You going to try to blame Taya for, for the Ooh, immediate losing shit to Deanna Barraza. You know, we'll blame her. Shout out to Taya. And if you, oh, fun fact, if you see Taya go into the audience to, on tonight's show and she does that little look, that was towards me. Um, shout, out to, <laughs> shout out to Taya. Uh, she's a funny, funny, funny character. And honestly, both of these women and a lot of these knockouts, all of them, are um, show so much love to women's wrestling talk, and we really appreciate it because we get to have um, like honestly, that's how me and Madison even started interacting with each other because she said something on the Twitter when I was live tweeting, and then she was like, "I hope you know it's all fun," and I was like, "No, you gotta bring it. Like, I want it. Like, I love it." And then we've had so many. We've had Tasha and Mickey arguing. Uh, we've Both had Chelsea. Times. Chelsea calling people internet idiots. Uh, like, and we love it. And, you know, the one thing about Impact is they always show us amazing, amazing love, and we always make sure to do it in return. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't know. Queen of the Mountain has me, um, like, that gif of the water bottle. Shaking and stuff. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm nervous. No. And if you're going to be here, in Nashville, yeah. uh, Music City, uh, the real capital of Tennessee. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what you heard, but um, Slam Anniversary is starting to look very, very crazy. And as of now, Queen of the Mountain is the only women's match that we have so far. Um, of course, any other matches that you know they decided to post. And they decide to. Um, I mean, let I'm pretty sure we should have more matches than what it is. I mean, as of right now, I mean, of course, you know, the Briscoes and the Good Brothers, okay. Josh and Eric Young, okay. The Queen of the Mountain, okay. The Ultimate X Max, okay. We normally don't end with the band, but I gotta say this because mm-hmm. we were slick pop for this last night. I mean, for the, for well, yeah, last night. Sammy Callahan and Moose. The people that wanted. definitely has to be on its own Slammiversary. Yeah. It's so much. It's the start of that feud, so it definitely has to be that. Um, so, I mean, I, I believe it has to be that. Like, that's another match, but they don't deserve oh, the look. Hmm? Yeah, the Ultimate X match. Yeah. So, I mean, there has to be something else. I mean, the Ultimate X match is not going to last that long, honestly. But, I mean... There has to be like at least another match that takes place. I mean, of course, we'll have some on like before the countdown or something. Maybe they'll put the women's tag team match on the countdown to Slam Anniversary or something. There has to be some segments going on um, for Slam Anniversary. The way that they're doing this little promo video with Josh Alexander and everything, and all these little rumors about maybe some more Joe or Kurt Angle coming and so on and so forth. I mean, Nashville, you have a lot of people and I mean, what, what, like, it's so much that you can really, you can't really express. It's the 20th year. Yeah. 20 years of Slam Anniversary. There has to be something huge that's going to happen here. Yeah. That My, nobody is talking about. I see in the, um, you know, I'm on the Impact Fan Nation on Facebook and stuff. You know, they're saying, of course, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, you know, um, I know we're gonna listen. I'm we're definitely gonna see Jeff Jarrett. Like there's that's a lot. like you can't be a, in Nashville and not see Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. Just and like I mean, we didn't know he was gonna be coming to Triple A yeah. and shocked shocked the hell out of us when he popped out there at Triple A and I was like, hold on. And he cut a promo too that Triple A had posted today with him and Brooke. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you he was being very disrespectful. Yeah. Um, I, I see, did you see it? Mm-hmm. It was like, let me tell you something. Mr. Jeff Jarrett is still the same Mr. Jeff Jarrett he's been for a very, very long time. He does not care at all whatsoever. Hendersonville, Tennessee, Lord. <laughs> home, right? A real home. Big <laughs> wrestling, baby. When I tell you, it's definitely going to be some guitars flying. It's going to be like. 
I'm glad we're not on the first road show because I ain't trying to get popped in the head with no uh, pieces of a guitar. No, we are, we we not too far, but we're at the no, we're on the, se- we're on the second row, so yeah, which is so good because we're on the fairground. Mm-hmm. So honestly, I was at the thing we was on the third. We on the second row. We are on the second row. Oh my god! So y'all, the soft shakers, we bought our tickets together. <laughs> we're, on the sec- we're on the second row. So, you right. know, you might see us, you know? You might. I wish this head on stand for f- fall out, because that... Sure. Uh, they not even going to get to, like... What sucks is that Slammiversary is all live, so all the content that we give you during that time will be live at the show. Mm-hmm. Of course, we like to do our fun little reels, you know, so make sure you check those out, share those, post those with your face and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, all the footage from that will be right here. Well, I mean, definitely not this one, mm-hmm. but right here. <laughs> and uh, whew, I can't wait because, you know, we put out some real time. We also, so um, before we get out of here, we forgot um, Masha Slamovich and uh, Shani, Shana. I call that girl Shawana, my bad. I do apologize. <laughs> I, <laughs> you got the girl Shawana. I did. I really did. But, I mean, you know, they had their match. It was pretty good. Um, uh, she wrestled um, in OVO and Mission Pro Wrestling and AEW. She has before. Yeah. Um, and she was also trained by Dustin Rose. Dustin Rose is what Bobby gave us info on that. But I mean, you know, after the fact, you know, we I mean we had the discussion, right? Hmm? I'm like, where are you getting it? You don't think I'll be hello? I am navigating, okay? You just I don't know what you're doing right there. The compass are in your face, nigga. I don't know what you The compass are not in my face. I thought maybe you was looking under your phone or something. No no no, I had cut it I had to cut it off. Oh my god, see this is why okay. I had cut it off. Okay. Well, this how you think I got the message from Joseph? Well, Joseph knows this. Joseph knows everything. Okay. Not well, Probably. well, we had. I mean, we had a discussion in regards to how long it's gonna be before some before Masha actually has a real opponent, and she actually gets one tonight because after her match, uh, Havoc, you know, makes her way anonymously to the ring, and now we're gonna have Havoc versus Masha next week. So I mean, like, could this be the moment where Masha stop having those? Build, builder, build a superstar match and actually have real opponents. Home talent, mm-hmm. or like home talent. Let me face Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Back. Like, you know, I think that this could be a start for Masha to work her way into maybe having some matches with some of the actual girls on knockout on the knockouts division. Yeah, because I, could, I like the one time that I could actually get good footage of Masha mm-hmm. Slamovich. I won't be there. Because when I tell you, mm-hmm. by the time I hit record, all of her matches are done. Well, then you when, it's like, like, when she comes out, well, what are you doing? When I come out, I get that, and then she, you know, I post that and everything. She gets in the ring, they ring the bell, the match is over. I get one shot of, of whatever she does. This last time has been the most that I've ever gotten from her match. <laughs> actually went. A lot of the matches that she's done, literally feel so much longer on mm-hmm. television. Really it really do does. Like, honestly, it's like she having three-minute matches. And she don't. Like, her, literally her matches, like, the, from the ones that I've seen, mm-hmm. so quick. Like, okay, great. Well, got the entrance, and now I'm trying to figure out who this new girl is, because, of course, this is women's wrestling talk, okay? So mm-hmm. we want to feed everybody. I right. even saw, I'm not going to say the name, but I even saw people were reporting Masha and they said nothing about her opponent, not even the name. And I just mm-hmm. feel like that's respectful. And a lot of the women yeah, that are... I mean, like, how are you going to sit here and, and, and talk about a show but not even acknowledge the local talent? Weird. I don't who, know. Who's actually, been, who's actually been, been in different promotions wrestling. Even WWE, do it, they do it to people. Like, they don't put their ad names or they don't put it... It's like... What's you have to go me? through certain social media pages to find out who the 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 talent enhancements are. Honestly, and there there is a page like AEW in AEW has like a, a 
a talent enhancement page where all of those who wrestle on dark, they tag them, they give a little description about them and everything. I think there may be a page for W like that, but I haven't ran across it. Um, I've just seen talent recruit or something, some WWE like recruit page. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. It's, it's like the kids that are working in the um, in the performance center. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's important that every like everyone should get that exposure because you never know. Like I knew nothing about Ashley D'Ambrose mm-hmm. or Shaz or you know Queen Amita or yeah. you know the Renegade Twins, but when I went to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, they are over appreciative of platforms like women's wrestling talk where yeah. we're able to give them. So the least we can do is make sure. Yeah, um, get some footage of them, tag them, and stuff like that. I mean, this is a way to build up your connections and whatnot. A lot of times, people just go to the shows and you know only there for like the people that they actually know or care about, or only because they got free tickets for it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we always go around and say, you know, support your wrestlers, support these other wrestlers, too, because some of them are just having their first batches. All of your famous have started somewhere to the point where nobody knew who they were. You know what I'm saying? Build, build your relationships like, before they become people. bigger stars. Yeah. I mean, that's why you get a lot of people go back to the indies, too, because they show mm-hmm. appreciation. The young yeah. Always one, you know, Chelsea. You don't worry about people judging you, though. You know, so only in these, only in these people really just, it's just regular people who just go and just love to see people wrestle. Yeah, that's it. Not those who go to these shows to criticize, criticize, criticize. Nobody has time for that, like at all. It's it's unfortunate too because you miss out on a lot of good promotions like what they're doing at Terminus Wrestling, uh, Terminus. Mm-hmm. I can't even say that. Wrestling <laughs> with Madison uh, coming up June 12th, of course. Tasha yeah. Sims will be making her Impact Knockouts World Championship to Battle Slam um, in Atlanta, and I will be there as well. And I got to go to the Vendetta show. And I have noticed, and this is just me, I've noticed that the Impact shows and those other indie shows and stuff mm-hmm. um, are just a little better for me. They're just a little more like of my comfort mm-hmm. um, overall. I don't know. I, I feel like I fit in anywhere. Whether if I go to an AEW show or a WD show, like I've been to more, yeah. I've been to more WD shows in, like my entire life, um, more so than anything indies or anything of that nature. I just feel like I fit in anywhere. But when it comes to GCW, that's why I feel like that's why I feel like I'm home run. Yeah, we it's so much stuff going on for Stardust. We going to Ric Flair, Rose. We going to. Yeah, Can I get up there and roast him? I got a lot to say. We're, we're actually going to Ric Flair's last match. <laughs> and I'm just scouting Charlotte. Like, that's the only thing. I just think Charlotte's gonna be there watching her dad, and I'm just gonna be there in the presence of the queen. And she might not even be. She might sit out there. She may not be sitting out there. I feel like she's definitely going to the roast. I feel like her right, and Drive. Mm-hmm. I do feel like this is when we're going to see, like, Charlotte in Nashville, and then all the rumors that are going to start of her return, and then mm-hmm. maybe she'll return, maybe she won't, or whatever. Um, but who knows? But I, just that whole weekend with GCW, of course, uh, it's the people versus GCW here in Nashville. Um mm-hmm. Joey, what's his last name? I can't Joey remember. Joey Janella. Joey Janella. Joey Janella. Joey Janella. Joey Janella. He's like the face of GCW. He's always on the match card. No matter what's going on, he's always on the match card. Always. You can always find know. Joey Janella somewhere. They say put Joey Janella and Ric Flair in the match. I want to see. I want to see the intergender. I want to see, like, what I think they we might have some intergender matches. I mean, I think uh, and uh, Masha have a match on the. What I just know, Al, our host here who does AW Dynamite, uh, of course with Mika, she's going to the W show in Las Vegas, and that is that card is sad. She is getting fed. And she's already prepared us. Honestly. Yeah. 
Yeah. Teach you learn to prepare this. Yeah, my shoes need to be. Go with some shoes and um, make sure that you wear goggles or something if you sit on the first row. Does it tell you the time stamp? Yeah. Yeah, it's like an hour and ten minutes. Um, I see that Bobby said that he would like to see Trisha Dore wrestle on Impact. Uh, Joseph said before her match with Jessica Havoc, they are they were treating Masha matches like he here is your your time to stretch and go to merchandise stand. Bobby said he would like to see Renee Michelle wrestle again at Impact. Joseph said, how many people are actually requesting Joey Janela? John Mosta is returning to You Don't Understand show on June 18th um, to defend his GCW World Heavyweight Championship match. Maybe we could get um, Mr. Moxley in Nashville. Yeah, after when I saw from AEW, I ain't really trying to... <laughs> oh, Moxley. Moxley, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of, the, I'm thinking of Johnny uh, Elite. My bad. Um, maybe, maybe I just heard Johnny because I was just like, man, you said Moxley. What is I'm not talking about Tyler Backer's husband, okay? Johnny I Elite. See, I saw Moxley when I went to the AEW show, and um, mm-hmm. you know, it was cool. I think seeing him in GCW would be a little more exciting. He's a different character you know? in every show, that he, in every promotion he steps in, he's a different character. Oh, cool. He's was a different he person. Like Hmm? Is that what that was? What? He was with Sammy Callahan on that promo. Which promo? It was like, well, he was announced. Moxley and Sammy Callahan, I think, were announced for GCW. Oh, for the GCW show? Yeah, that's Sammy Callahan. They're gonna, they're the Switchblades, which is quite interesting. Um, yeah, I, mm, I had a lot of questions about that. The only Switchblade I know was Jay White, but here we are. Um. But yeah, so it's a lot of things that's planned. Um, I think it's, I mean, I'm, we're pretty much done with Impact. We're not going to chill too long because uh, I, I think maybe the, the person that's kind of running the show back here may be ready to go night-night. And for us, we, we stay up we stay up weed hours of the night. But um, yeah, that was Impact, y'all. I hope you guys definitely enjoyed it. Um, it's a lot of things that's going to take place next week that we're very much excited for. Um, I hope you guys are ready for that. We're on a roll to Slammiversary. There's a lot of things that are going to transpire um, till we get to Slammiversary. And I, I'm very excited um, to be there in, in Nikki's somewhat of a hometown state. Um, hometown state. Definitely. It's just not my hometown. I would say, I, I would say, say hometown state. Because I can't say hometown city state. Because. No. I will say this. I have, I spent, so I've, I've been here. I'm 30. I've been in Tennessee all my life. Mm-hmm. 21 years in chat and now almost 10 years next year in Nashville. I feel like a Nashvillean. Oh, Lord. The way that Mac, Mickey James claims hardcore country is the way that I claim Nashville. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's home. You guys are coming to my house. Home. This is also uh, Bianca Belair's home state too. Mm-hmm. It is. So. It Crazy weekend. Is. Although Knoxville is, is is hours away from me, and I've been spent a whole day trying to get to Knoxville. But with Nashville, it's five hours. I know that's crazy. That's awesome. I think I will say though, make sure you guys are following and subscribed. Um, for those that are, you know, that watch us on YouTube as well as mm-hmm. Twitter, Facebook, of course, if you are live here with us on Twitch, you get it first. Mm-hmm. Okay. So make sure you are here. Make sure you turn that on. Of course, we have a lot of shows. A lot of shows. We You got to see the Creep Squad earlier. And that's every two weeks. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So check out everything you guys of course um and i mean you know before we get out of here you already know we are the most dominating tag team in women's wrestling talk the first the original the undisputed the most reigning defending i mean you know and you will only see the salt shakers you will only see 
our post show on the number one women's wrestling show on the planet, and that's Women's Wrestling Talk. Until next time, you guys, we will see you later. <laughs> you sweet. <laughs> we don't know when this is ending. We really don't know. We're just, we're just going to keep doing this until the camera's cut. We're going to sit here all night. <laughs> we're probably already at the smashing of the table when Tiger comes <laughs> <laughs> On the outro, I have no